you must have many questions about dolphins. Fish can breathe underwater through their gills, but a dolphin must breathe at the water's surface through the blowhole on the top of its head. A mother dolphin gives birth near the surface of the water. The baby dolphin, called a calf, is usually born tail first. As soon as it is born, the dolphin calf must swim to the surface for air. At the surface, its blowhole opens and the calf takes its first breath of air. The dolphin calf swims close to its mother, feeding only on her rich milk for about six months. Gradually, the calf learns to catch fish and squid, which will make up most of its diet when it grows up. When the calf is about one and a half years old, it will stop nursing, but may live near its mother for many years. The dolphin is a very social animal, which means it likes to be with others. In the ocean, dolphins live in groups called schools. There are usually 50 to 100 dolphins in a school, but thousands have been seen together. Dolphins have more teeth than any other land or sea mammal, between 88 and 100 of them. The teeth are all pointed and all the same shape. They don't have molars and front teeth like we do. A dolphin's eyesight is much better than our own, and it sees just as well in the open air as it does underwater. Most scientists agree that dolphins probably do not have a good sense of smell, but their hearing is very, very good. Their ears are tiny openings located just behind their eyes. In fact, the dolphin's hearing is so good, it can actually identify things with its ears. Dolphins send out sounds which echo back to them. By reading the echoes, a dolphin can tell the size, shape, and distance of any object. This echolocation ability is called sonar, and it works much like the sonar used by submarines to navigate underwater. Dolphins can make many different sounds, which scientists have studied for years. We don't know much about this dolphin language yet, but we're learning more all the time. Now, we're headed out to sea, where the wild dolphins live. Dolphins are friendly animals. Today, two of them will return to the oceanarium with us. We're on the lookout for dolphins. There they are. The dolphins are swimming alongside our boat. The game is hide and seek in the water, and catching a dolphin without hurting it is what we're after. The dolphin we catch will be treated with care. At the front of the boat, a diver holds a net, which is attached to a long line. Into the net and through the hoop goes the dolphin. The long line lets the netted dolphin swim freely without tugging and hurting itself. A brightly colored marker shows us where the dolphin is gone. Our divers go over the side. They'll catch up with the dolphin and bring it back safely to the boat. The divers take another line with them. It will help the others guide the dolphin in. The divers are gentle and help the dolphin not to panic. They make sure its breathing is regular. Now it's time to get the dolphin aboard our boat. It looks like a difficult job, but everything is well planned. This special sling with holes for the dolphin's flippers goes into the water and is slid under the dolphin's body. Then, on this stretcher, we lift the dolphin over the side and gently lower it to the deck. Now the net can be removed. The dolphin is made comfortable while we go to find it a friend from the ocean. Dolphins love company. 
They like to be with their own kind, and they like being around people. In ancient Crete, an island near Greece, it was believed that dolphins were pirates who had been changed into dolphins to make right their wrongs. There are also more modern stories of dolphins helping people in danger at sea. Dolphins and people appear together often in ancient art. The scenes are full of friendship and cooperation. Even today, many fishermen believe that dolphins help them fill their nets. Now we've caught our second dolphin and we must quickly see to its needs. First, we make sure to keep its skin very wet. Like people, a dolphin can get sunburned. Wet blankets and hosing keep the dolphin's body cool. We talk to it in gentle tones, so it will know we mean no harm. There's a hole in the blanket for the dorsal fin, and the flippers must be kept wet too. The dolphin is breathing comfortably. The boat speeds back to shore, and we take good care of our ocean friends. Careful notes are kept on their progress. Lots of water and cool shade are provided. In the harbor, our dolphins are met by a smaller boat which will carry them to shore. Even as the dolphins are transferred from bigger to smaller boats, we keep them cool, calm, and comfortable. The last little trip to land. The journey is over, but for these two dolphins, a new life is about to begin. Welcome to our home, dolphins. We know you're more at home in the ocean, but be patient a little longer and things will get a whole lot better. Before the dolphins get to their new home, they need the proper medical attention, just as we need shots before attending school. A dolphin needs shots before going to an oceanarium. The shots protect it from diseases that could make a dolphin sick. Scientists have studied dolphins for years, and there's still a lot left to learn about them. But we do know a lot about how to keep them happy and healthy in an oceanarium. These two are ready to discover their new water home. The dolphin measures the size and shape of its new space. Using sonar, the dolphin can know every detail of its tank, every nook and crevice, and everything in the tank. The information a dolphin receives from its echoes is so exact that even a blindfolded dolphin can find its way around perfectly. It didn't take long for this dolphin to feel at home. Your friends usually smile at you when you're happy. Our friends, the dolphins, seem to be always smiling. They're happy in their ocean playground and happy to perform for us. There is much more to learn about dolphins and how they live. They are friendly, helpful animals. And while we learn from them, hopefully, we help them in return. <laughs>